everybody ding 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 that's what i'm talking about welcome back welcome back this is ringside presents corner confessions and i am troy vaughn also known as trey amazing favorite part-time stripper part-time mega church pastor but full-time dating commentator and i am here with the epic up and coming and she is the illustrious she is a dope comedian here on the atlanta scene i am joined by none other than the awesome alicia Bridges. Say what's up, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, Troy. Thanks for having me today. I love that intro. I didn't even get that to him, y'all. He came up with that. I know, right? See, people, you know what I'm saying? I got all these side hustles. If I'm not, <laughs> if I'm not preaching a good word, I'm, I'm shaking my ass for cash. So, well, I'm shaking my ass for crypto these days. So, you know, that's how we get it. But, you know, I am really, I do want to say thank you so much for honoring me with this interview. Um, I've certainly caught some of your videos. You are a rising comedian here in Atlanta. Very funny, I might add. And you are a uh, official, unofficial, uh, quote unquote, relationship expert. <laughs> because, you know, I say that because, I mean, I, I follow, um, you know, your videos and I know you give a lot of your comedy um, is based on things you're experiencing dating, uh, relationships, and the opposite sex. And, you know, I mean, let's be honest, anybody out here dating, Dating and relationships is, is funny. It's seeped in humor. Hilarious. Very it's hilarious. One way to put it. In, uh, that's what I'm saying. So before we dive into it, really quickly, kind of give us a brief introduction of who you are and you know what it is that you do. So my name is Alicia Bridges. I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I am a stand-up comedian. I have been in the game for about four years now really started getting into it during COVID, which is the opposite for a lot of people in this industry. Um, but yes, I am just so grateful to be here in the interview and I'm ready to get into it. All right, well, let's get into it. Knuckle up. So, you know, for a lot of the um, videos I've seen and even following your page on social media, you talk about, you know, relationships and, you know, you drop some jewels, but you put a comedic spin on it. So out here i mean and people have their feelings about Atlanta dating um many people say it's trash you know a lot of people say it's um totally different as far as your experiences with atlanta dating you know what have been some of your experiences and i mean do you feel like um the being it being trash is well earned or do you think it's exaggerated or what's what's been your experience um i definitely think that dating today in atlanta major cities is difficult Mm -hmm. um, and it's difficult for a number of reasons, but one of the reasons I feel is that we are a generation that is in a interesting area of time, right? Because we came about when marriage started to change, started to mean something, and it started to change for a variety of reasons. One, the way laws were changing when it comes to women and their accessibility to certain jobs, money, and education. Um, it started to change as medicine advanced because we think about abortions and birth control, being able to get your tubes tied. Mm. Um, it changed, I believe, um, be in, because of those reasons, like now women don't necessarily need this financial cushion. It has made men have to come to the table with something different other than money which they are inexperienced with because it's never been a focal point and that is emotions mental health availability empathy um vulnerability these are concepts yeah, personality. that personality yeah personality come yeah, okay. on personality yeah. you're so right these are things that weren't required at first because a woman's goal was to get a man that could financially take care of her Mm -hmm. So, because we are in this weird space where things are, are really changing, we don't know what to do. And we're trying to hold on to old traditions in a new world. And it's almost like a trash can bin where everybody is picking and choosing, going through what it is that they want and what they don't want. And here lies the problem with dating in Atlanta. Like the perfect salad bar or a buffet. <laughs> Take what you want, leave the rest. 
Yeah. I like that. No, I'm definitely digging that. I'm, I'm for everybody out there. I'm, I'm back here like testifying. Like, yes, yeah, she is. <laughs> she is. She is preaching a good word. Okay, I thought I was the one delivering the ministry, but no, I'm feeling <laughs> that. Okay, so she didn't beat me to the punch. So, you know, I can understand. You know, you date out here enough. I mean, if you're out here in these streets enough, you know, you're gonna experience the highs and lows, and good things and bad things. You being a comedian. What, you know, and you can, you know, keep things anonymous, but what have you experienced, you know, as far as, um, you know, the way you date, you know, as far as online meetups or, you know, people meeting in real life? What are some of the most bizarre stories that you have brought to your comedy or that really brought, like, great material for you on stage? So, I'm always so goofy on stage. Um, I have not talked about this yet. But something super bizarre that happened was I had met this guy on Match, right? Mm -hmm. I have done every type of dating from online to in person to like speed dating, speed dating blind date, like whatever. So met okay. him through Match mm -hmm. and he helped me to create a new boundary of if I have not talked to you on the phone, we don't go out. Because me and him have been messaging on Match and I had agreed even before we had talked on the phone that we could Ooh. go out. Talk to him on the phone first. Right. It was like maybe a week before we were supposed to go out. So I was, or no, it wasn't a week. It was maybe, maybe it was same day. We had been talking on the app for a while. And then by the time we exchanged numbers, I had also said yes to a date. Okay. One time mistake. So when I called him. I could not get a word in edgewise. He was oh. very conceited. He was very self-centered. Now remember, we're all growing, trying to figure ourselves out. We're people pleasers in some instances. We're afraid of hurting somebody's feelings. So this is what I'm going through for you judging. So I thought to myself, if this guy is anything like this on this date, I'm terrified to go. But then I say, okay, maybe it won't be that bad in person. Maybe it won't be that bad. Y'all, I get to the date, it was 10 times worse. Oof. We was at Harold's Chicken, Ice Chicken and Bar or Ice Bar or something. Down on Edgewood? Yes. Uh, okay, great place. So, you know, we're sitting in there and he's just bragging about what he does for a living and everything is just so exaggerated. Classic mistake. Then the bartender, I don't know what she was doing but she was being weird and she was like snickering and i don't know what that was about so it made him feel uncomfortable so like he is like visibly irritated with whatever she was doing mm -hmm. so end of the day gave him a hug and i said to myself i'm never gonna call this dude again like i'm good and i feel like he felt the same energy mm -hmm. So, about four days later, he texts me and he's like, hey, what's up or something? And I basically had said, hey, like, why are you hitting me up? Because it didn't seem like we were interested in each other. No chemistry. Right, there was no chemistry. So then I tell him, like, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. So he goes off on me and he tells me this is why I don't date divorced women anyway, because I was divorced. Um something about women in atlanta cool so i said you know what oh he told me that he wasted money on me and i think my meal was 25 dollars, so i politely cash after him back his money oh wow um and then i blocked him so his you know you could have just blocked him without sending him the money no nah, because I, I was trying to prove a point so then i get on facebook and i guess he had been looking at my page or whatever because we weren't friends on there and I was arguing with somebody about something else. And he gets on there and says that I use men and I use men for free meals. Mm. That's what he told me. Oh, and God, that's why God cursed me with psoriasis. That's what he said, because I have psoriasis, which is an autoimmune disease of the skin. Mm -hmm. So he told me I use men for meals and that's why God cursed me with psoriasis. So basically, he just went into full, you know, the, what do you call it, uh, defense mechanism. He, he felt that rejection, and then he decided to just go off. He was 
And like I had, he made so many pages. Like I had to end up blocking him on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. Okay, he's a red flag. He's no, he's crazy as hell. But that taught me, bitch, do not go out on no date with no man if you have not talked to him on the phone first. But that was me being inexperienced with mm-hmm. dating, just, just not as aware and not trusting myself, right? Mm-hmm. Because when I was on the phone with him. My inner sis was like, girl, I don't know about this, but I didn't trust that feeling. So, yeah, but he told me that's why God cursed me with psoriasis, even though, I mean, no shade to his mom, RIP, but she died of AIDS. So mm-hmm. why would you sit there and say something horrible like that to somebody when someone that was very close to you had a chronic illness? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I... You know, I've often heard women say that in terms of, um, you know, how disgusting, how much of a turnoff it is to be sitting across a dinner table with someone and then bragging about themselves that they're talking about their resume. I hear it so much, and I'm thinking to myself, are guys really oblivious to, you know, the fact that they're not, they don't realize, okay, I'm talking too much about myself, you know, talking too much about my job, my salary or whatever and i'm thinking you know i would hear these over and over again i'm really thinking it can't be that bad out there so i've only had that kind of thing happen twice so it was him and then it's another guy which i don't want to give too many details because he'll know that i'm talking about him but he's really well off and um i went out with him he had the nerve to show me his salary on accident on quote-unquote accident right and it was it was well into the 300s oh nice um but that was just obnoxious to me and like the entire time we're sitting there he's just it's nothing interesting it's just work and all these accolades that he has which they're very impressive but and and that probably would work on a woman who was about that like she cares about finances or there's a certain lifestyle but like bro i'm trying to figure out who you are who you are as a person at your core your essence like who you are if you didn't have none of that that's what i'm trying to figure out so i was quite annoyed and turned off and i just couldn't even build an attraction to him it was it turned me off no, I mean, this is actually very fascinating because, again, um, you know, any and everybody who, a lot of people I've been around, when you hear these stories from women, and I'm thinking to myself, these guys must be young or maybe don't know any better, or I'm thinking, like, what, I can understand the point, you know, if you're trying to impress a woman and let her know that you ain't no broke nigga, and, you know, because, again, that's, um, that could be, that's a go-to punch for a lot of women mm-hmm. you know call me a broke nigga mm-hmm. but if you bring a, you know you got a guy on a day showing you receipts showing you like look i make 300k ain't nothing about me broke nigga but at the same time that could be like you said obnoxious you know hella pretentious and for a lot of guys and he is <laughs> right i mean it, it sounds like i mean mm-hmm. it made me feel like i was there with you mm-hmm. i mean i can understand how that could be a major turn off i mean i'm yeah so i mean Actually, these stories really are good because I'm like, okay, these are things that women, a lot of women like yourself, who are dating and hoping to find, you know, a compatible match with someone, you have to deal with, you got to kiss a lot of frogs out here and there's a lot of them out here. Um, And so, man, but I know, you know, as a comedian, even with, you know, a lot of these dating calamities, you're able to find the comedy, the comedy silver lining because, you know, sometimes you can't can't help it that's all you can do is laugh at it and so um a lot of your dating uh stories and your adventures and experiences they do affect your comedy yes um yeah for sure like i remember dating this guy with a really small penis oh and so (laughs) i think i i think i saw a video you were talking about man with a small i may have caught didn't you do something i have it in my set but um yeah and Sometimes I would joke, jokingly think to myself, like, I would hate to have sex with him and then not have repented, and that's what I go to hell for, like, three inches of dick. So, Damn. it's like the running joke. But, nah, that was, 
And that joke is always hilarious depending on who's in the room. Um, but that's a true story. Like, I used to think that in the back of my mind. Like, this is not worth the sin. I never thought about it that way. Not worth the sin. <laughs> Damn. Oh my, it's like, you have to, like, we gotta okay. start off at nine inches if I'm risking my salvation for it, you know? With some I girl. never thought about it like, look, if, I, <laughs> if I die right out there, you know, I'm like, what's, what's this pussy worth? It? <laughs> what's the pussy worth what? it? Because they have, like, you know what the pussy, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> I'm like, I, I, gotta, I gotta repent for this. I'm like, I could have just jacked off. I'm like, I'm like jacking off would have been so much better and cheaper. Right, facts. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, um, you know, it's, you do hear a lot of men and women who comment on the quality of dating here in Atlanta. And, um, you know, it, it, it's bizarre to me. I've, I've lived in Atlanta for 25 years, and I certainly have my ups and downs, my dating horror stories. And I know that they can vary from person to person, yeah. but you know, throughout all the testimonies, there has to be some truth there. So when I encounter, um, you know, these stories like the one you just gave, I'm like, man, this is it, hell out there. So you know, finding the comedy in the dating, mm -hmm. and you know, you apply that on stage. You know, what kind of re reception do you usually get? You know, are people you know, right there with you? Are they laughing? Or are they People can always relate to relationship jokes. And mm -hmm. relationship comedy is one of those things where it has no color, it has no age, it has no certain look or sexual orientation, none of that. Like, people can relate to it. So I love it. And it's just so funny to cultivate jokes that can apply to groups specifically like um i did a show at my sister's room a couple of weeks ago and that's a lesbian bar here in atlanta and so i have this joke about how i feel like an asian stud should not have a eight inch strap on because that's cultural appropriation of black men well damn and so <laughs> So like in the moment I had just started, look, I took my microphone. Did y'all see that? In the moment, like I was just, I started making all of these strap jokes, but it's so funny because it's like, yeah, it's about relationships. It's about sex, but how can I cultivate this? So this specific group can relate and understand. So that's comedy. That's one of the reasons why I love it because it really takes a level of creativity and emotional and emotional intelligence that a lot of people don't consider when they think of comics mm. no I, I i can totally understand that um i'm like damn i was talking about aging stud and a, and a strap on um <laughs> yeah i mean hey i guess if you're dealing with a strap on i mean you, you don't have to worry about ed or <laughs> premature ejaculation a whole lot of things you ain't gotta worry about i, I told though i'm like i'm jealous of y'all because as women you know when we say i wish the dick could stay but you could go like them bitches can really say that and mean right. that like they could take some good dick and put it on an emotionally available bitch you know what i'm saying like we don't get that advantage so that's like something i said in the moment they was like cracking up laughing no no i can imagine yeah so no i i think that um you know, I've often said that a lot of comedians are in their own right relationship experts. Mm -hmm. um, the fact of the matter is, I mean, even when I was in college, I learned a lot just watching Chris Rock. Um, yes. You know, Chris mm -hmm. Rock, I mean, he's a comedian. He's well known for being a comedian, but he's dropped a lot of relationship gems. You know, a lot of gems. It, it makes you laugh, but very applicable. You know, very applicable. I mean, and so, and that's the reason why I think even what, you know, following your page, you do give a lot of relationship advice. I mean, it's obvious you're coming at it from a comedic angle, mm -hmm. but it's still applicable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like using comedy as a vehicle to get the point across, but it still resonates with your subscribers. Right. And so, um, so you're the dating <laughs> horror stories. I mean, you bring them on stage and um, it provides great materials. Um, are there anything as far as dating or you feel like would be off limits in your comedy or certain things like, you know, I'm going through this, but I'm not going to bring this up on stage or it may or may not be relatable, but it's like, you know what? I just, I'm not going there. 
Um, not as of yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not as of yet. I mean, of course, if I had like a crazy breakup and something embarrassing happened, it probably would take me a while to work up the courage to talk about that. But nothing so far has happened. Knock, knock on wood, where I'm like, I can't talk about this, so I'm gonna bust out into tears. Mm -hmm. uh, so not yet. Would you say that the comedy is a good, is, well, I mean, obviously it can be cathartic, but um, I've often wondered, you know, I was, I was talking with someone the other night, we were talking about um, Mary J. Blige, mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of people, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people would agree her best material came when she was in pain, mm -hmm. you know, when she was going through heartache and drug usage. Do you think um, the more, you think the calamities and the bad dating experiences provide you with you know make you a better comedian especially since a lot of the material is about relationships and dating you think that not that you want to have more bad first dates but you think that ultimately it makes you you know that much a better comedian because it gives you more material and it's something that you've actually gone through i think my advantage is going from being very toxic to now a healed emotionally aware person because now i can see relationships and dating from mm -hmm. both sides so one at one time in my life i was a part of the insanity mm -hmm. now at this point in my life due to my awareness i'm able to observe the insanity <laughs> so i find so many things that are ironic when it comes to dating marriage relationships and so i try to take the craziness from those ideals and incorporate them in a comedic way. Like one of the jokes that I do, and I haven't done it in a while, but the premise is that relationships are so related to smoke and crack. Like it really is. Like it becomes an addiction where you, no matter how low you go, for some reason, you just keep coming back to it. You keep, then you start lying to your friends and family because you ain't told them how it abused you, how it made you do crazy stuff, how you ain't happy but you need it. They ain't tried to do everything to get you out that situation. You can apply this to both and you go back. So now you lying and acting like you ain't messing with it. So even with a premise like that, like I take that, which is very true, mm -hmm. and put it in a joking way. Okay. Yeah. So if Alicia could go back mm. five, six, seven years and speak to the younger Alicia as far as dating, what to be on the lookout for, um, how to prepare for the volatile dating scene of Atlanta, what would you tell younger Alicia? You, you know, if, we, if we walked outside and we hopped in my DeLorean and we went back in time and we found the younger Alicia, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, you know, <laughs> full of hope, you know, full of wonder and just going in the dating scene. What would you tell her, you know, as far as where you are today? What would you tell younger Alicia? So it's interesting that you say five to seven years ago because that's when my journey of healing and growth started. And so if I could go back, I would tell her thank you. Thank you for understanding and having the intuition to know that what we were doing as our younger selves was not going to produce a fruitful loving life so i would say to her thank you for taking that first step of therapy of not understanding what was wrong but knowing that you wanted something better and so if i could go back and just like give her some advice i would say learn self-compassion faster learn grace faster um, but really to do everything that you're doing, just learn to give yourself grace because the journey is not linear. So if I could go back, that's what I would tell her. Okay. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Really quickly, everybody out there, if you are watching, uh, make sure if you're on Facebook, make sure you go to the search bar, type in Ringside LLC, make sure you request to join and either myself 
going to admins will admit you and go ahead and take this time to subscribe to the YouTube channel ringside uh, drop a like and receive the notifications every time new content drops and while you had to go ahead and drop some comments some constructive comments don't get too crazy but uh, drop some comments down below Alicia before we wrap up kind of let the people know where they can find you give us some you have a website you have social media you know if, if somebody wanted to follow your comedy and just wanted to you know maybe even reach out and you know let you know hey I'm, I'm I'm not going to give you my resume. I'm not going to talk about myself. <laughs> How could someone reach out and find me? You can find me on Alicia Got Jokes. That's A L I S H A Got Jokes. Um, that is my comedic page, but for a more serious, personable side where you can see about my work and advocacy for psoriasis and other chronic illnesses, you can go to Alicia m bridges alicia spelled the same way alicia m bridges so yeah let me know that you see me on here let's connect i love meeting new people all right everybody those links will be down in the description so uh if you didn't write it down just go ahead and just uh look below i will have her links and all her contact in the description so just click on it and connection will be made Thank you so much, Alicia. This has been dope. Thank you. Um, thank you for allowing me to interview you. And you are the first comedian on my channel. So this has been an honor. Oh, thank you. I Every appreciate it. It's an honor for me, too. Thank you for trusting me to give you good content. Always, always. Everybody out there, thank you for joining us. And we will see you guys again soon. Yeah.